Hello YouTube, I'm Will, and this is the first in what I hope to be a series of videos about all the different weird hi-fi and consumer electronics that I find while out thrifting. Or at estate sales, or at swap meets, or on the side of the road. Now, I have never shot, edited, or uploaded a proper video before. I really don't know what the hell I'm doing. At the risk of sounding like a Pinterest recipe for almond cookies, let me just qualify this dumpster fire with a little insight into my expertise with vintage electronics. I have none. Zero, whatsoever. I like them, and that's as far as it goes. But seriously, I am not an electrical engineer. My knowledge only covers what I can fix with a screwdriver and a can of contact cleaner. When it comes to this kind of stuff, I, I don't know what I'm saying. With that out of the way, let's take a look at this thing. This heavy beast is a CR80DSS quadraphonic 8-track player built by Akai. It was released in 1973 when 8-tracks were still the second most popular format for pre-recorded music behind vinyl records. Okay, so it's an 8-track player. What's so special about that? This is a quadraphonic 8-track player. Okay, so what? Well, to answer that question, we need to go back in time to the glorious days of polyester. First, let's explore the history of this guy. Not Elvis, the humble 8-track cartridge. The 8-track is what's known as an endless tape cartridge. Endless tape cartridges were invented by Bernard Cousino in 1952. The idea is really simple. Rather than having two separate reels that are wound and rewound like you'd have with one of these, you actually have one reel. The tape is pulled from the center of the reel and then rewound around the outside of the reel all at the same time. The first widely available endless tape cartridges were the Ortronic tapettes, although Calcino did design something he called the audio vendor before that, which hooked to an eight reel-to-reel uh, -reel machine. These led to the Fidelipak cartridges, which have a similar form factor to the eight track. Then eventually the four track Munt stereo pack in 1962, which looks almost identical to eight tracks. There were a few other endless tape cartridges out there too. The one that I find particularly interesting is the play tape because it looks like a little hobbit sized eight track. Then about a year later, we got these. Eight tracks, all the non-rewindable fun of endless tape cartridges, but now with up to 80 minutes of continuous stereo sound. And it has an aerospace pedigree because the designer, Richard Krauss, worked for Learjet when he made these. Yes, that Learjet. In fact, there's one to my right, which is actually branded Learjet. Who doesn't want to be able to say that they own a Learjet? They were made more, uh, they were simplified and made to be more reliable. And I'll eventually do a video on why time and oxygen, among other things, has made that not so much the case. But look, they got their very own pinch roller built right into the cartridge. Take that, four tracks. It was actually a pretty clean and elegant design, which made them pretty easy to use in cars and portable stereos, and most importantly, airplanes. The way these work is there are literally eight tracks, like the little freeway lanes laid out on the surface of the tape. And each one contains a discrete and unique audio signal. In this case, it's a left and right channel that uh, control one of the speakers. That is stereo sound and is considered for all intents and purposes the standard for good recordings. Single channel sound is called monaural for, or mono for those keeping track. So that's it, right? So it's an eight track player. What's so special? Well, this one is actually quadraphonic. What the heck is quadraphonic? That's four channel sound, not stereo. Four discrete tracks of sound per recording. Two, two speakers in the front and two in the back. This was a precursor to the modern surround sound. Unfortunately, the format was very short lived only a couple of years. There weren't as many quad eight titles released as regular eight tracks, but there were so a fair amount of pretty interesting ones. Most importantly, they gave us Black Sabbath's Paranoid, Metal History, and Four Channel Surround Sound. I can't really speak to why they didn't take off. I'd speculate that people didn't want to have to buy new equipment to play tapes that they already had, just so that they could play a couple of them with extra speakers. Plus the quad tapes were about 20% more expensive, and the quad tapes were not really backward compatible. And it's too bad, because this thing is cool as hell. I love it. Look at that beautiful mid-century design aesthetic. The wood, the lettering, the yellow nicotine stain. This thing is the 70s. It might as well be wearing little bell bottoms. I love how it stands on its feet the way muscle cars of the time did. And it sounds pretty damn good, considering all the 8-tracks I have are from thrift stores and pretty beat up. This thing came at a time when Akai was at its peak. Akai was founded in 1929, or 1946, depending on who you ask. From what I can find online, most of their stuff from the 1970s was well-liked, and this particular unit was being touted as their top-of-the-line 8-track player for home audio. They were one of only a handful of companies making stuff like this. Now, there were two different units that were very similar. 
Uh, there's a stereo version which is a little bit smaller and has blue lights for the programs instead of the red ones like we have here. And there's one that's just like this, but it has a built-in amplifier that can drive its own speakers. I suspect that's why this unit is a little wider than the standard 17-inch hi-fi stuff that has a finished top and sides. I'm assuming that meant that it's supposed to sit out on a table. This unit can also record. That's actually something I hadn't thought about until a couple of years ago. It never occurred to me. You could buy and record onto blank 8-tracks the same as you would with cassettes a few years later. I don't have any blank 8-tracks to test that with, unfortunately. I really want to try it out. A sweet thrash metal 8-track tape would have been a great thing to have. I couldn't find any documentation for the MSRP anywhere online. Other quad 8-track players from the same time seem to run about $200, which in today's money is almost $1,300. That's a lot. My dad bought his first car for almost $400. It was used, but still, that gives you an idea of what this machine went for when it was new. I'd like to demo this thing for you, but I can't really because I don't have anything that isn't copyrighted. Uh, but suffice to say, it sounds pretty good. That is until the foam pads in these old cartridges crumbles into powder, basically making it unplayable. Although I did find a couple of tapes with little felt pads and metal springs, and those seem to work just fine. So I guess that's it. That's the video. Bye. Like and subscribe.